Hey everybody, today on the show what we're going to be talking about is simple daily habits to become better and better at sales. We all kind of think that sales is this big complex thing and there are big and complex deals, but there are certain things that we can do every day to keep our mindset right, our focus, our energy, and to ward off those down times and recover from them. These are all things that uh, we have to do preventively because when we need them, we're going to make sure that the deposits are there and that our subconscious mammal brain will support us. I think you're going to enjoy this interview. Uh, these I, I've tried to keep it to the short, the most impactful ones first, and you get the most out of those, and uh, feel free to get Dave's book as well. Before we get into it, make sure you're checking out CoVideo. Video is the way to do it today in email. Uh, they just added captions. What a great capability. Also, Pipe Drive. Pipe Drive's my CRM, and I think everybody needs a personal CRM because you can use it as your mail and your calendar and your history to keep track of where all your deals are. Go to pipedrive.com, use the Brutal Truth coupon code, and I'll sum up what's going on in the courses at the very end. Here we go. Hey, Dave, welcome to the show. As a way of getting started, tell us about yourself. Well, thank you very much for asking, Brian. <laughs> I will do that. Uh, and first of all, you know, I, I want to tell you, Brian, I am a major fan of yours. I really am. When I first saw you doing those videos, walking down the street, you know, talking yeah. to your boss or whatever, you know, like, you know, like, hey, 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 it's my boss, everybody. Hey, 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 oh, yeah. This guy's crazy. You want me to do what? You know, stress benefits, just give him a contract, no benefits. What? Yeah. You know, uh, I, I fell in love with it, you know, and I, I watch them all. I absolutely love it. I'm a super fan. I want you to know that. But uh, uh, about me, okay, uh, I've been very blessed to be extremely successful in sales for 30 plus years. Uh, I started off like, in college selling door to door air filtration units, you know, and I made a fortune doing that back when I was 18 years old. I'm so proud of that. And then from there, you know, I, I, so many things like uh, selling DSL, T1 lines, television advertising, um, and, and uh, access to compliance websites for safety directors, environmental directors. And most recently, I'm so proud of this, is uh, in my book right there. If I may just brag for one second, <laughs> okay, How to Be a Great Salesperson by Monday Morning. And this was released March 2nd, 2017. And uh, I, I love telling the year when it was released because every year I sell more and more books. Every year, it just, it's just more and more. And three months after my book was released, it, it was released, um, it was selected as a top 10 must-read book in sales and marketing, my top sales world. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was like, wow. You know? yeah. So that's very exciting. Oh, what was your hardest sales job? My hardest sales job? You know, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. My, my hardest sales job, let me think about this for a second. Uh, I was living in L.A. It was back in the 70s, and I was selling toner, ink, for Xerox machine. You know, I, I think everybody's paid their dues in that one, you know. I'd have to be at the office, you know, like at you know, 6 a.m. on the phone selling toner to the East Coast. It was like, oh, my oh, God. Oh, boy. Yeah, you the time change is a killer. It, it was brutal. It was just – it, it, that was my worst one. <laughs> how, how, how about the most complex? The most complex um, – I would say uh, probably selling uh, access to compliance websites, you know, yeah, yeah to uh, for HR directors, you know, safety directors, and uh, you know, uh, and I'm even doing that now, you know, and it's actually a lot of fun. I really love it because it's just keeping everybody on the right side of the law. HR directors like to say, um, that's it's a, it's very detailed, but it's so much fun doing it. Yeah. Well, that, that brings up a great point because I, I talk about it a lot as far as talking about what the other person cares about. Yeah. And yeah. How yeah. they get rewarded. Yeah. Not what they should care about, but what they do care about. Uh -huh. You know, because a lot of us, we talk about what the product does, how it works, how it's different, how it's better. But, and we, we push that, the interpretation or the bridging of that information onto our clients instead of us getting in and explaining exactly why they should care and what happens to them personally if they don't fix this problem that we solve. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now what well, was the impetus to write your book? 
Well, I'll tell you, um, the reason why I wrote my book, like I said, I, I've been very blessed to be very successful in sales for 30 years. Every place I've ever worked, you know, top producer, I'm very blessed, okay? And the reason why I wrote my book, Brian, is because I heard somewhere, I, I, I read it somewhere, I can't remember, is that everybody should write an autobiography. Everybody should write their own story for their children so their children know more about them. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. So I'm thinking of all the success I have in sales, you know, and I thought, I, I actually, I wrote the book for my son because I want my son to know all my stuff. I want him to know everything I know. I don't want to leave this world thinking I, something I could have, there was something I could have said to him to make his life easier, and I didn't. So that's why I wrote the book. And, and most recently, I have to tell you, I, I did an interview with, uh, I, I know you know Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup yeah. for the Soul, Success Principle. I had an interview with him and I told him that same story and he looked at me and says, Oh, so it was written with love. And I went, yeah, <laughs> I didn't think of it like that, but it was. And I think that's one of the reasons why the book is so successful is because people pick up on that. I get people emailing me saying, I feel a connection with you. I feel something, you know? So yeah. that's why. <laughs> and your son's in sales. No, he's not. <laughs> well, <laughs> what happened? A failed childhood. Huh? No, actually, he works for, uh, he, he, in college, he majored in computer science and Japanese, and uh, right now he's working for Charles Schwab. You know? A perfect combination. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that something? So, but, you know, aren't we all in sales? I mean, there's little tricks, you know, just saying someone's name so you get their attention first. Just, you know, little, little things. So. Yeah. Uh, that's it because I I wrote my book as and I what I found by doing it it's a great exercise. Oh yeah, right because we we have you know we have our notebooks we have our memory we have our system we have our habits, but they're easily misplaced, forget, forgotten, and not accessible at the moment that they're most helpful. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, how many sales meetings have you left and you go? I should have asked this question. I should have closed oh, right. for the next step. I should yeah. have done this. Yeah. I, or or we, we kind of recognize why they asked that question, that there was mm. a lot more behind it than just the words. Yeah. You know, every now and then I'll read my own book. Okay. It's like, yeah. You know, it's on my nightstand with other stuff, you know, but I'll read my own book and it'll be like, Oh, I forgot about that part. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's like, Whoa, it's a great refresher for myself. Yeah. yeah. And I had mine on Audible, and I would listen to the pertinent parts yeah. based off of the deal when I was faced with that element of the deal. Yeah. And, and that's it, even though, because you don't sit down and write a book over a month or a couple of months. No. It's a year, year and a half project? Yeah. Two years? Two years yeah. for me, yeah. 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 And how many times did you read it in that process? You would think it, you'd had it memorized, but you don't. No, you're human. Yeah. And, and I can't tell you, and I know this has happened to you and everybody out there who's written books, you know, it's like, I'll be lying in bed. It's three o'clock in the morning. I'll, I'll wake up to go to the bathroom or something. Right. <laughs> and I'll get back in bed and I'll be lying there. And all of a sudden <gasps> a thought hits you. Oh my gosh, you got to get up, go to your computer, start writing. You know? So it's like, Oh my goodness. But I, yeah. And I think it, it's probably a good exercise for anybody at, at some level. It doesn't have to be published. Yeah. Uh, but it should be uh, anywhere but just in your head. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I so agree. Get it out your, there. Your head is the worst place to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this file part, that file part. Yeah, because it, that, that's it. Because as uh, mammals, we're not very good at pulling out information when we need it. We're very good at, you know, analyzing it when we're relaxed in the shower. Yeah. Or, or sitting down with a notebook. Or, yeah out at a picnic and boom it comes to us yeah but that's not sales sales is you're in the game you're on the field yeah right and our brain switches to our subconscious mm -hmm. right and if it's not there it, it it's it doesn't get used yeah. That, yeah that's why every sport it's practice 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 yeah. the same thing to move it from our conscious to our subconscious where yeah. it needs to be yeah yeah, I, I, I sometimes call that subconscious the hard drive, you know. You know you, That's the hard drive. That's the yeah, OS, yeah. the operating system. Exactly. And sometimes, like I say, like you said, you go down there and reach for it. Like, whoa, where, where is right. it? It's <laughs> like you just got to search for it. It's like yeah. moving that disk around too many times and it can't find yeah. it or it finds the wrong thing. 
practice, practice, practice. Now, let's get into like my favorite topic is what makes the difference between the great reps and the good reps? Well, I got to tell you, uh, nowadays, I, I personally feel that people, whether they realize it or not, they're really craving for the human touch whether they know it or not, because everything's email, text, this, that, and the other. And uh, the good reps and the great reps, it, there's a lot of little things in my book, actually, that, that cover that. And one is like, there's so many little steps, so many little, tiny little things people can do. It's like, you know, for, for me, I definitely think that the, the most important thing anybody can do when they're approaching a customer, anything like that, the very first thing you want to do is make them laugh. That's the very first thing. Forget everything else, make them laugh. And usually self-deprecating jokes work best. It's like, you know, if you hear something creaking, that's my bones. I can't take this cold weather, I'll tell you. Because as you know, I know, when I talk to you, I know I'm preaching to the choir. I, I know that. But, you know, but when you get someone laughing, they relax, they listen. Endorphins yeah. are released in their brain. They're happy. And they're thinking that you're really cool because you're the one who made them laugh. And they're thinking, oh, this is going to be fun. So they relax their guards. So first thing you want to do is make them laugh. And, and uh, how to be a great salesperson by Monday morning, my book, it's pretty much written in a chronological order of what one should do. Cause like I say, I wrote this for my son. So I want him to get the steps, you know, and it starts off with me. I, I won't get, I, I could get going forever. Like once I get started, I get excited. But first thing is make them laugh and then enthusiasm and benefits or enthusiasm and attitude and then benefits and then urgency. And it just keeps going and going. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, I think that part is overlooked, you know, people yeah. call it rapport, people call it bonding. And I agree. I mean, humor for most of us is the easiest way. Yeah. And, and if self-deprecating, because we can talk about ourselves yeah. or something in common. Yeah. You know, that's why most people talk about the weather. Right? Yeah. Right? And I think in the last five years, a lot of sales experts have been saying it doesn't matter. Well, oh. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> well, you, you have different, like, like say you go into an emergency room. You don't have to, the doctor doesn't have to crack a joke because you need the doctor. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Ooh. But if you're knocking door to door, you better be able to break down that cold, like, who are you? You here to harm me or give me something? Yeah, 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 right. Because it is that mammal. I use the analogy, two dogs meet in a park. Mm -hmm. They either bark at each other to, to, like, keep each other away. The smart dog lays down on its back, shows its belly, and says, I'm here to play. Hey. Right. I'm not going to hurt you. Right? <laughs> Let's have the some fun. <laughs> it's a day in the park. <laughs> right? And that dog makes a lot of friends. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we are naturally very cautious of strangers. Yeah. Because that's what selling mostly is. It's conversing with strangers. Yeah. Yeah. And who teaches us that? Did your parents teach you how to talk to strangers? They said, don't talk to strangers. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't make eye contact. Don't talk to strangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because yeah. they are outside of our tribe. Yeah, yeah. And, and humor is basically showing your belly. It's saying, I'm, I'm not here to hurt you. Yeah. You know, but yeah. Let's, let's have, at minimum, a fun conversation. Yeah. You know, you know, Brian, when I was a freshman in college and I was selling air filtration units, right? You know, not, not a lot sexy about that. You had to make it sexy. You know, <laughs> you know, but, but, yeah, I'm 18 years old, you know, did incredibly well in that job, though. I'm so proud of it when I look back. But I used to go in someone's home and I'd have on my sport coat and I would I'd go, do you mind if I take off my sport coat? They go, no, nah, go ahead. You know? So I take off my sport coat. I turn my back to the customer and I go, oh, my gosh, excuse me. This isn't the shirt with the hole in the back, is it? You know? <laughs> uh, right, exactly. And they start laughing. And it never failed. After somebody started laughing, they were like, oh, I, well, can I get you a drink? You, yeah. you want anything? I'm like, oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Okay. Right. But because with humor, you, you align yourself with them. Yeah. You, you become part of the tribe almost instantaneously because you're talking about what they care about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and people say, well, oh, I don't have a sense of humor. It's like the hole in the shirt didn't take um, comedic <laughs> skill, did it? No, no. I didn't, go, I didn't have to graduate from the improv to figure that one out. <laughs> you <laughs> did it. <laughs> you know, and people just, you know, joking about the traffic. 
about the time of year, the craziness that's going on in the world. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid to get out of bed with everything going on. I'm going to stay in bed. Call me in a year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's well, funny. What other things did you see the difference between great reps and okay reps? Uh, another thing is, uh, and here's, here's a simple little thing. I mean, I, I, I got a list, let me tell you. But another thing, everyone listening, you know, they, these are things I just so, I'm so thrilled to share these with people. It, it's like somebody's name. Okay, yeah. the sweetest sound to anyone's ears is the sound of his or her own name. You can never, ever, 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 ever say your customer's name too many times. And think about this. Okay, once I get going here, Brian. Okay, so, anyways, but the thing is, when you say someone's name, okay, now listen to me, you own their thoughts for three seconds. So it's like if I go, Brian two, three, four, you know, I own your thoughts because it's been programmed in a sense of birth. It's like your mother says your name. You listen. Somebody said, if I go like Ted, everybody named Ted, I just got their attention. So when you're doing a demonstration or something like that, let's say you're coming to a wow factor in your presentation. First, say your customer's name. You will have their undivided attention, you know, and Tom, out, two, three, four. Tom, I wanted to point out this here, you know. So that's very, very important. You're bonding every time you say their name. You're getting cl- you're bonding. It's, it's these tweaky little things, you know. I think it's first you got to make sure you know how to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> you know, if it's a Tom, is it? Do they want Thomas or Tom? Yeah, now yeah, it go. is a sign of respect. Oh, oh indeed. Yeah. yeah, because you know the, the Mister or Mrs. today isn't as often used yeah yeah but it is a sign of respect and sign of that you put enough energy in to want to say their name the way they want yeah right no definitely definitely it's like you use your middle initial probably because there's it's a common name right well, my middle well, my middle name is Ralph, so I I, I use well. Dave's a common name, and Cook's a common name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's kind of like David R., David R. Cook is my author name, but yeah. I prefer Dave Cook. You know, okay, yeah, it's just easier. Uh, what else? Well, another thing, three other things. I I call it EBU, okay, E B U, enthusiasm, benefits, and urgency. Okay. I mean, like I say, there's a whole list, but these are the tip of the iceberg, you know, it's like enthusiasm. As you know, Brian, I mean, you, you have to be excited. You have to get excited because if you're not excited, why should your customer be excited? Right. And, and and I, all my life people say, Oh, enthusiasm sells. You have to be enthusiastic, you know, and I'd be like, well, okay, but how am I supposed to get enthusiastic? Well, I have a way to do that. Okay. So here's a little, little thing, everyone. Um, you have to be excited, right? So a quick little way to get yourself excited before you go on an appointment, because your level of excitement is your customer's level of, of excitement, okay? So what you want to do, here, here, a little trick that I use, okay? Close your eyes and think of the absolute happiest time in your life, the time that you were the absolute happiest. Could be your first date, your first kiss, your, when you got married, when your child was born, whatever it may be. Lock that into your mind. Get it in there, okay? So when you go to visit your customer, when you put their hand on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the office door where you're going to go in for your appointment or whatever it is, Think about that time. So you automatically, you're back to the happiest time in your life. You suddenly got yourself psyched up. Whoa, okay. So there's more ways, but that's one really good way. And I, I think excitement and enthusiasm are contagious. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I got a bad start to this in my career because I was selling to engineers. Oh, oh. <laughs> right, who, who are neither enthusiastic or excited. <laughs> excited. <laughs> so you had to kind of like build that up. Yeah. But they, oh, yeah. it would happen. And, and anybody who goes on a sales job interview, if you're not enthusiastic or excited, forget it. Yeah. That will matter much more than your college degree, your oh. handshake, your resume, your quota, your W-2. Yeah. Because that is what they want to hear. Yeah. And see and sense. Yeah. And if for that, that single sales call, you should learn how to be able to uh, manage your mood and express it. Yeah, I agree. Cool. And another one, can I do another one? Yeah, we got time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> A little sip of water if I may. Yeah. 
ridiculous. You know, I, I never know how much time is left. So maybe that's why I race a little bit because I got so much that I want to get in. But, you know, but the EBU, I told you, EBU, enthusiasm, benefits, and urgency. And then the next one is benefits. Everyone, you know, it's like benefits, stress those benefits, those whole filling benefits, 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 benefits. For example, okay, let's, let's say that you're selling like a baseball. You know, the product doesn't matter. Okay, let's say you're selling a baseball, okay? So when someone's buying a baseball, they don't care about the stitches in that baseball. They don't care about the leather in that baseball. You, you know, what they're buying is the fact that they can play catch with their kids. That's the benefit. The fact that they can hit a home run. Yay! That's what they're buying. Maybe tell them, you know, baseball lasts 10 years, however long baseballs last. I don't know. But they don't care. So don't go out into the weeds and the stitching and the leather because that's not what they're buying. They're buying the fact they can play catch with their kids. That's what you want to stress. And you can play catch with your kids. That's it. And what happens when you play catch with your kids? I mean, do you remember playing catch with your son? Oh, oh yeah. God. I bet he does too, right? Oh yeah. The memory lives forever. Yeah. Right. So it's not the baseball. It's that outcome that you get. Yeah. That memory, that bonding. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, <laughs> sons and fathers, you, you got to find something that you have in common. Yeah. Right. That's, that's right. A passage stuff. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, the, and the baseball itself, you're right. It doesn't matter. Could be, could have been a tennis ball if, if a baseball wasn't around. <laughs> there you go. Right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's probably Sometimes easier it's... in case you hit somebody with it. <laughs> yeah, right. Sometimes now, it was. The question I have for people who have been in career sales. Mm hmm. How do you stay motivated? Because I see a lot of people get burnt out after good 15, 20 years in sales, never mind 30. Yeah. How, how do you stay motivated? I, I don't, you know, something, Brian, it, it's just, I, I'm so competitive and I have so much fun doing this, you know, that I, 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 it doesn't take much for me to stay motivated, you know, and it's like, I want to be successful. You, you, you got to think of what does motivate you, you know, like, you know, I want to be successful in my son's eyes and people around me, my family. Your identity. You know? yeah. yeah, right. You know, that keeps me motivated. And the fact that you, and I really, really mean that, that what really, one of the things I really like is the fact that your product or your service can make someone's life better. That is, I get a major kick out of that also, yeah. you know, so that motivates me. And they call me up later or send me an email about my book or something. Dave, thank you. Oh, that was so awesome. I love it. And I'm like, yay. You know? yeah. So <laughs> those kind of things. And what separated you from the rest of the pack when in the company? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, probably, you know, my, my enthusiasm, everything I'm talking about right now, my enthusiasm. And, and, and competitiveness, you know, I, I just had to be or have to be number one, you know, because that's just what I do, you know, but, uh, and I like, but I like everybody around me selling also, because if everybody's selling, you're going to sell more, you know, yeah. but it's mainly things I'm talking about right now. It's what always kept me number one, being excited, stressing those benefits, saying the customer's name over and over, making them laugh right up front, you know, yeah. get excited. It's a party, have fun, turn it into a game. People love playing games, you know, right. Make it a game. Yay. Okay. Instead you know? of being stiff and worrying about oh. the rejection. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. How do you bond with another person? How do you communicate with them? Because a lot of times what we sell is timing based where mm -hmm. you have to plant the seed. And when the timing arrives, like real estate, you know, you're, yeah. you're either in the market or you're not. Right. You're not going to convince somebody to get into the market, right? Maybe for a summer home or timeshare or something. But yeah. you know the, the triggers. You, you wait for them. You know they get married, they have kids, they retire, um, whatever it is. They get relocated. Yeah. It's a it's a trigger event, but they will most likely go with either the realtor they know, like and trust, yeah, or a referral from somebody who has, has that relationship with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And do you have any particular routines that you do daily to, to kind of keep you excited and focused and not get burnt out? There is no question about that one. Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> you ask these questions and it sets me off on a whole. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. And it's affirmations. Okay. This is what I do to keep myself pumped up, you know, and I'll tell you everybody, these affirmations, they start at night. 
okay, when you go to bed, for me, they don't start, I tell everybody, start them at night, because, it, you know, I am, use the words I am, because you, you can Google that, the, Sorry, Google that. the words I am are very powerful, you know, yep. but at night, you know, before you go to bed, you know, I am, I am blessed, I am happy, I am the greatest salesperson in the world, I am this, you know, when you're going to sleep and you're in the twilight, say this stuff, you know, because when you wake up, that, that'll get into your body all night, you know, positive, wonderful stuff. Yep. Now, in the morning, what I do, I set my alarm every morning for 6.20 a.m., okay? Goes off, and between 6.20 and, and, and 6.30, that's when I start my affirmations, okay? You know, I, I, I'm a blessed individual. I am positive. I am happy. Uh, greatest salesperson in the world. Um, whatever works for you. All the I <laughs> am. You know? Yeah, whatever works for you. And then I say a prayer for the world so everybody's happy, and then I pop up out of bed because, you know, a lot of people – you know, I tell people, you know, pe people get up in the morning and the first thing they put on is their clothes. And it's like, right. no. It's the all first, reactive instead of yeah, proactive. Yeah, yeah. The first thing you have to put on is your attitude. That's yeah. the first thing you put on. Because yeah. your attitude is like your shirt. People can see your attitude like they can see your shirt, okay? Right. All it comes through, yeah. Yeah, make sure that at, if your attitude isn't right, stay home. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know. Yeah. And where can people go to get your book? Well, I'll tell you exactly where they can go. Uh, on my website, it's very simple, I'm happy to say. It's davidrcook.com. That's it, davidrcook.com. And, and also, Brian, if I may say, I am extremely proud of, I recently released my master class. The book, the book, there we go. And these cameras kind of throw me off sometimes. Uh, the book, you know, it, it's like an hour and a half read. You can read it on the weekend and you can go in Monday morning with tips that are, I think you'll find quite mind blowing and they're definitely going to work for you. And the it's neat when you can boil things down into elements and build them up. I think this is key because too many things in sales are too hard. Even like you take something simple like questioning skills. There's all kinds of questions. The thing is to start with one kind and practice it until it becomes subconsciously competent, meaning it becomes automatic, like driving and breathing and walking, all these things that we really don't think about, but we're able to do. Uh, to get there in selling requires practice, but consistent practice, like almost every day. Just a This is why I have office hours with the courses. It's a every other Friday type of thing for one hour. <clears throat> and why I record the one-on-ones and put them in the course anonymously so that you can hear how other people are learning about sales through their questions, questions that you may not thought of yet. And it's like eavesdropping in or auditing a course, but you're participating and you get to ask questions. You get to have one-on-ones. Uh, what I wanted to do with the course is try and give everybody as much as I can in both content, uh, coaching, and community. And to have it be over a reasonable amount of time, uh, because what do companies do? They do with a two-day course uh, that's not customized to what you're doing. And you leave and you go, that was uh, good stuff, I think. And then you go back to what you were doing before. I've been through so many training courses in the two-day approach, and it, it helps. It's not bad. It's just not good. It's not great because you need habits. You need routines. You need repetition. You need to ask questions. You need context, and that happens over a reasonable amount of time. Uh, three months is too short. Six is good, but how about a year? That's the right amount of time, Brian. <laughs> That's why I make it a year. So you can sign up, go through it as fast or as slow as you want. Nothing's gated. You can pay all at once or through a convenient 12-month payment plan. It just takes it off your credit card every month. Uh, it is a payment plan, not a membership. And you, there's so much great content in there. Uh, the, I mean, think, I think there's over, what, close to 50 hours of office hours. And I don't know how many one-on-ones. And I try and keep them hyper-focused. Uh, I, I don't edit them down, so you can probably go to the, the last half of them. That's probably where the gold really is, because the summation uh, instead of the context setting. 
But the outcome that people are getting is they're getting into their dream accounts. They're learning how to have a business conversation that's not a pitch, that's not about them, that is about their persona, their client, the people they do want to talk to. And I think coming out of last year, the number one skill that I saw of the best salespeople was that they could have conversations that weren't discovery, pitching, objection handling, and proposing a negotiation. Okay, I bet you're pretty good at those. But those are all pull, meaning that they've already got interest and they're already participating and they're going to buy just how. The real gold is finding and working with the people that can or would or like to, but for some reason it's stuck. That is a skill. And the outcome of both of these courses are lifelong skills. Commit yourself just an hour a week of participating in the course, maybe another hour a week of applying it to your world. Get better. Close more deals. Close bigger deals. Close faster deals. Learn how to have conversations with strangers where the stranger wants to have a conversation go figure this is craziness brian this witchcraft you mention here i don't know what would i do with all that i don't know we all have a choice it's much better than the alternative you know what that is we don't want that so go to b2brevenue.com uh hit the training tab Uh, Take a look at the courses. There's a link there to schedule a time to talk with me about it, 15 minutes. I'll check out your LinkedIn. You don't have to tell me what you do. I'll know all that by the time we get on the phone. What I want to know is what you want to accomplish. What outcome do you want? Do you want to double your income? Do you want to win more deals? Do you want to get a better job? Do you want to learn how to have great conversations instead of being a walking brochure? All good objectives. Let's talk about them, okay? Make sure you're checking out my buddy's CoVideo at covideo.com, uh, pipe drive at pipedrive.com. Use the coupon code BRUTALTRUTH. Get an extended eval. Check it out. Play with it. See if you like it. If you don't like it, don't buy it. But I think you're going to like it. By far the best CRM out there. Uh, check out the other two podcasts, uh, Sales Questions, Brutally Honest Answers, and the B2B Revenue Leadership Show. Uh, check out the YouTube channel, Maverick Method, all one word, on YouTube. Also, come on by my LinkedIn profile and the company page, the Brutal Truth About Sales and Selling podcast page on LinkedIn, where I keep my funny videos. The funny videos are also hosted on the, LinkedIn, on the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll see you next time.